the Lord. God bless you, sir. Bless you, Lord. Amen. Blessings, everybody. Shout hallelujah to God. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> bless his name tonight. I am honored to be here tonight. Um, to be the saints of Bethel Portmore. I've not been to Portmore physically in, in a while from before of the pandemic. Um, but it's it's really good to be here um, virtually tonight just to share with everybody. And I trust and hope that you'll be edified. Please feel free to ask your questions um, at the end. Write them down, drop, drop them in the chat. I'm sure somebody will uh, make note of them. And if it is that you need clarity on anything at all, please feel free to just say something. All right, everybody, everybody? Are you hearing me loud and clear? Hearing you, sir, hearing you. All right, great. So I'm, I'm going to be sharing on my screen. And you can let me know when you are seeing it. Are you not seeing my screen? No, it, it came on and one moment. Yes, I'm seeing it, yes. All right, great. So we'll be doing some financial planning for financial freedom. And when it comes to money as Christians, I know sometimes it's a very touchy topic, um, especially for persons who are Pentecost. Us, I grew up in the Pentecostal church. Um, so I'm well aware when it comes to money, sometimes not the best topic that we like to speak about. But guess what? We all use money. We all need money. And if the Lord has so blessed us with financial um, wealth, we need to manage it properly. I manage it very, very well. You know, we are stewards and he desires for us to prosper. And if he desires for us to prosper, we have to know how to handle the prosperity. Amen, somebody? Amen. Amen, amen. And nowhere else um, loves money like the church. We love money like the church. We spend our good enough time to collect the money in the church. We have Sunday school offering. We have main service offering. We collect offering that Bible class on Sunday nights. Every, every service you keep, money is being collected. So as the body of Christ, we, more, we have a responsibility one because God is not going to come down here physically and give you the money in your hands. We are the hands and feet. We're the ones earning the money to support the kingdom. Amen. So mm -hmm. we must um, do better with our finances. So feel free for us to just run through tonight and to move forward. So I generally start by saying that you don't need a great start to be great. And this is also with your financial lives. For many of us, we didn't grow up with an inheritance, with a gold spoon in our mouth. We grew up poor. The reality is Pentecostals are the poorest within the Christian religion. Poorest. That's a fact. Um, so in order for us to come out of that um, box that we are in, or perceived box, we need to do things differently. So it may not be great right now, but guess what? it can get better. So having the knowledge financially is your power. So you need to know how to manage your money, handle your money, allow that money that you have to grow and to, to go into another direction. But you need the information um, to get there. So I want to ask some questions to know if you're financially well tonight, how you can plan financially and then some basics with budgeting. That's what we want to cover tonight in the 30 minute slot that we do have. So I'm gonna ask some questions. If any of these questions apply to you, you can let me know privately in the chat because we don't want Alka to know Charmaine's business or, you know, or, or, or Tia to know Daniel's business any at all. So just drop in the chat for me or write down a piece of paper so we can know. Anybody on the call have multiple credit cards, more than one credit card, or the credit cards that you do have, the limits are way, way up at the top. You know, you're almost passing your limit now. Um, your credit card balances, they are going up every single month. So pay days this week or next week. When you look, last month you owed 100,000 credit card. This month you owed $200,000. You just don't know what's happening there. If you are taking cash from your credit card, something is wrong. We need to be speaking outside of this meeting. You're not paying your bills on time. So this month, you're paying JPS because JPS is normally very strict. If you don't pay JPS, they cut off the light. But you say, all right, I don't have enough money. I'm going to pay JPS, but I won't pay Flow. Or I'm going to pay NWC. So next month, I'll pay that one. Or next fortnight. So if you realize that you're not able to balance all your bill payments every single month, all of them, are you juggling them, something is wrong. If you're going to your account every month and draw out money out of your savings, so your savings should be increasing monthly, but you realize you save $100, you drop about $50. Next, you get out $20. If you're doing that, beloved saints of God, something is wrong with the speak. If the collectors are calling you, 
you take a bed from court, you can't pay for it, and court is calling back for the bed. If that's happening, we need to speak. If the fridge soon get taken away, or you're alone and you're not paying well, if those things are happening, something is wrong and we need to be speaking. There's something called emergency savings, and I want everybody to answer on the call. No, it's a time for interaction. An emergency savings is when you have three to six months of your income saved or all your expenses saved. So, for example, your light, water, the rent, the mortgage, the kids, lunch money, your car payment, your loan payment, your credit card payment, your tithes, everything come together. It's $100,000, for example, per month. You need to have at least $600,000 saved in an account just in case you lose your income. If anybody on the call has six months of their expenses saved, please indicate no for me, please. Put your hands up. Sister Gibbet, Josalie, Anisha, the Princess, Meloni, Alwyn, Shelley. Anybody on the call has six months of that expense saved up? All right, anybody have three months of that money saved up anywhere at all? Damien, anybody? Althea, anybody? I have six months. All right, so we have persons who are having six months. I have one person that have six months. I want to see the hands, just, just have, a, have an idea. Out of the, the 18, the 26 persons, how many persons do we have? How many percent of persons? One person? The, 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 the people I'm hearing me on the call? Listen to me. Listen to me. I come to present. I need everybody to listen and to participate actively as we That's get right. down to your financial lives. Wonderful. Something one, wonderful. One, two, three hands. All right. So we have three persons out of 26 um, persons on the call. That's about 11% of persons on this call uh, who have an emergency savings account. Thanks, Vincent and Johnson. You can put your hands down. Anybody on the call? Are you investing? Yes, yes. Are you investing? Investing maybe in the stock market, um, fixed deposits, bonds, mm -hmm. a small business. If you are not doing that, then we need to speak because all right, one, two, three, three hands. All right, three hands again on eleven percent of the congregation. They are investing four hands. Thank you. Five. Okay, great. All right, anybody on the call? You only have one stream of income. If your salary or your job is your only income, please raise your hand. One, two, three, four. So, Mark, all right, I'm going to assume that the hands I'm not seeing don't have an income. One, two, three, four, five, great. Six, seven. All right, all of the persons, uh, if you have more than one, so the seven persons who raised their hand just now only have one stream of income. Great. Um, well, not great, but okay. <laughs> Those who have more than one stream, raise your hand now for me, please. Oliphant, Marcia, Daniel, Althea, Charmaine, Alwyn, Josalie, the Princess, Winsome, Maurice. Do all the persons have more than one? Raise their hand for me now. All right, one person. So I'm going to assume that the other 18 persons on the call, they have no income. Am I correct? There's no income coming in at all. Six persons had one. Two persons have more than one stream. Six and two is eight. Eight from 26 to at least 18. So 18 persons on the call tonight have no income. So if that's the case, we're even in our, thanks Vincent and Jodeline, we're in a position where we want to improve and to do better than what we normally have or normally are doing now. But what can you do though to be better financially? I want you to get very radical. Your finances need to take it up in, in, in hand. If you have high interest rate debts, close those off first. If you have a credit card that you can't handle very well, let us speak outside of this meeting. If you have multiple loans, guess what? We want to start putting them together to consolidate your debts, going to clear them off as soon as possible. If you are somebody who loves to borrow, stop borrowing right away. If you are in any financial distress that I just made mention of earlier, I will just start reducing our expenses. I will just start live within our means. I know for many persons, one of the biggest challenges that you will find them in is persons living outside of their means. We do things to, to prove to Sister Gilbert, 
to prove to Daniel that we can do this and we can do that. But if you cannot afford it, it is okay to say it's not in my budget. And as Christians, we must have self-control. It's a fruit of the spirit. We need to control ourselves. You can't go spend and spend and spend like you have more money than anybody else. If you can't afford it, beloved, we need to just say, I can't afford it. It's okay. not in my budget. It is okay. And that's a good place to start. And the last one is start saving. If you are not saving, we need to start saving. But guess what? Before we do anything else, let us pencil down what we want to achieve. What do you want to achieve financially? Some of us, we want to maybe achieve a home. Some of us, we maybe, we want to um, pay off a debt or our kids are going to college or we want to buy a car or we want to build up a house on the land that we already own or we want to have a business. But it's so important that you define the objective. What do I want to achieve? Get out your pens and paper and write down the plan. Even the Bible says, write it plain, make the plans plain, write it down. Right. Yeah, and the financial goal is no different. Yeah, we want to grow in God, we write that down. We want to, to, to accomplish this for our kids, we write down the financial goals that you have in mind. Number two, organize your, the finances. How am I going to achieve this now? So I want to save $100,000 for the year. That means that I would need to be saving Eight thousand something a month. You can't say you want to save a hundred thousand dollars, but monthly you're not putting on the eight thousand every month to reach the goal. You have to organize yourself. But how do you do that? You start by doing a budget, because you need to know what can I afford to save or not save. So you have to do a budget. Track your expenses. Where is your money going? Sometimes you get paid. This Friday is a payday, for example. Monday morning, you check your account, you don't know where the money is. Oh, yeah. You just start spending on all over the place. You give this, you give that, you buy this, you buy new shoes, you buy new blouse, you buy two Chinese food, you go for Popeye, you go for KFC. Before you know it, $10,000 out of the account is gone, $20,000, and you don't have a clue what happened over the last few days. So you must track your expenses. And lastly, devise an income strategy. What that is basically saying, where can I get more money from? How can I earn more money? What am I going to do? Because if I have this goal, guess what? I must now know how am I going to balance out myself financially to earn this. Five quick things. But here's what the goal that you're going to make. It must be number one. It must be specific. If you remember nothing else tonight, your goal must be smart. The S is for specific. What do you want to achieve financially? What will you want to achieve this year? Starting January 2023, what do you want to achieve all of next year financially? You want to save this money. You want to buy this um, new bike. You want to save towards your wedding because you know you soon propose or the man will propose to you. So you start saving already. All right? You know you want to donate this amount right down. Be very specific with what you want. And that also helps in prayer. Be specific in your prayer. Lord, I want your help with this. So being specific is always good. Number two, it must be measurable. A sign of value. Don't just say, I want to be rich next year. I want to save 100,000. I want to pay off the bill of 50,000. I want 10 million. Whatever, put a value to it. Number three, ensure that it is attainable. So S is for specific, M is measurable, A is attainable. You want to make a goal that is reasonable. And we'll say about God of faith. So we'll say, all right, I'm going to have faith in this goal this year. You, 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 you see, you earn $100,000 per month. There's no possible way that you're going to save the entire $100,000 a month. So it doesn't make sense. Just say, just say, I'm going to save $1.2 million this year. If you plan to only save from that one income. As Christians, we'll be doing by a lot of we don't buy cash pot. We don't chop the line. We don't do those things. So we have to make it quite attainable and you're laughing. But it's the reality. Number four, it must be realistic. Don't ignore your limitations. You know you're only earning 100000 for example. You don't plan to look at a new job. No, you don't. I have bills of 50000 You really can't save $100,000. Make it realistic. And lastly, which is a T, it must have a time frame. I want to achieve this goal by this date. 
So your goal must be smart. Remember the acronym from everybody tonight. Financial goals, you need to have goals, short-term goals, medium-term goals, and long-term goals. Everybody must have those goals. And the book of Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 16 says, a wise man thinks ahead. And as Christians, we can get up tomorrow morning and say, whoa, it's the spiritual lead me now I want a house tonight. No, not us, so. If, if, if the good book says that a wise man plans ahead, it also applies to your financial life. You must plan ahead. You get up for the new year since do the things I want to achieve. If the Bible is specific that we need to plan ahead, it also applies to our spiritual life. The Bible says a fool doesn't. And he even brags about it. And I don't want us as Christians tonight to think that it is okay to just get up and just and behave any sort of way. As Christians, we represent Christ even in our financial lives. So you must have short-term goals, medium-term goals, and long-term goals. Your short-term goals are those goals you can achieve in like a year. Medium-term, over a year, less than five years. And your long-term goals are those goals over five years. Examples of those goals, your short-term goals are, for example, you want to pay off your credit card, you want to save $100,000 this year, you want to start investing, stuff like that, consider your short-term goals. Your medium-term goals are goals that 24 months, for example, you want to save in your emergency savings. I know many of you did not have that, so that can be a goal. Everybody take out your notepad now, on your phone, a piece of paper, write down short-term, medium-term, or long-term goal. And while I share tonight, I want to write down some things that you think you want to achieve financially. I'm going to pick on persons as we go along to share one of your goals that you have written down that you can achieve. And one of your long-term goals can be you maybe want to start saving towards your home, your deposit on your house, for example, or a car, or you're going to start college, you want to go back to school, so you start saving towards that. The reason why we need to have financial goals and plan, you don't want to be dependent on anybody. You want to achieve something, you're going to pass up an offering for you to, 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 to do this and do that. We don't want to do that. We want to be a case where we are pouring into the ministry to help um, persons who really can't help themselves. But if you are financially able to plan and make good decisions, we need to be doing that as Christian people. The church say, amen. 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 There are five goals that everybody needs to have. Number one, we spoke about it earlier, back up money in case anything happens. Number two, trying to reduce your debts. Number three, retirement planning. As you're getting older, Bear in mind, you won't be able to work as hard as you can when you are young. So you must have money saved towards retirement or a plan towards retirement. Whether you're going to build some house now to collect rent when you're old, whether you're going to put on some heavy money now so you can get the interest when you're old, but you should not get old and the bird is now on your children. The Bible says that good man leaves an inheritance for their children. So you need to ensure that brethren, saints of God in Christ, you're not on the call saying, well, my child is my investment plan. My son take care of me. That is good if they do, but that should not be your plan. Your plan should be I'm putting things in place to ensure that when I am not able to work anymore, there is some amount of money that I can have access to. Get insurance. I know where people are faith. I know we pray and God deliver. I know, I know, I believe. But guess what? There's medical care that must be done, more often than not. And I've seen several persons, they have been saving and you get ill. And guess what? The illness wipe out the savings, beloved. Clean, clean, clean. I've known several people in our apostolic faith, Bethel, who would have been diagnosed with cancer. And the Lord did not heal them. For whatever reason, we don't know. But guess what? There is care that must be taken during that stage. You have to get medication. You have up and down. Who's going to take care of you during those times? While the brethren pray, and we trust in the Lord to heal. During the process that we're waiting, there is some amount of care. We must be responsible. Get some critical illness insurance in case you become ill, in case you get burned, in case anything happens. You need to have money to take care of yourself. And more often than not, the insurance is not expensive. I know persons with critical illness insurance for $2,000 a month, two five a month. That's money only used by KFC sometimes and four pieces of papayas <laughs> and by act for convocation. I know. So we can simply put this money aside 
just in case anything happens. We need some insurance. So we can talk more if you have insurance questions, we can talk about that. But insurance really is you putting down money now to take care of anything, any eventualities, just in case anything happens. And lastly, we need more than one stream of income. These are all goals we must have in our plans. But what's our budget though? Uh, it's really writing down how much you earn and what you plan to spend. Simple. It's how to spend your money. Plan how to spend your money. The book of St. Luke 14, number 28 says, sit down and estimate the cost. Suppose one of you want to build, the Bible says, won't you first figure it out? Sit down, estimate the cost before you start, to ensure that you have enough. The Bible says that. And if the Bible is telling us to do that, we need every successful business, every company that you see successful and person, they do their budgets. Write down, control the day-to-day -day expenses, live in your means, and it helps you to prepare for what is to come. In your budget, you need to make sure say, you're, you're covering food because you must eat. Your rent and your mortgage must be paid. So every month or fortnight or week when you get your pay, you ensure that these things are coming out. If you are blessed enough to have a, live with somebody that you don't have to pay rent and mortgage, God bless you, which is very, very good. However, if you have your rent and your mortgage, you should own your rent as, as people of God, if you have an income. The landlord should know the church gate waiting until church to be over to collect the rent. Your rent doesn't surprise you every month. It comes every month. As a clockwork, your rent is due, beloved, and your mortgage. I'm saying that to say, if we plan properly with our income, which is why we need a budget to ensure that means that something don't get left behind. Marcy or something get left behind. So your budget must cover your food, it must cover shelter, it must cover how you're going to move around, and it must cover um, clothes that you have to wear. What I tell persons all the time that your budget, you have a 50, 30, 20 rule of budgeting. What, what is that, Brother Carlton? What is that, Brother Chino? When you get your income, if you earn $100,000, for example, 50% of that $100,000 you should use to pay your needs, your rent, your food, your, your bills, anything like that. 20% must be saved. That need to include your tithes, your emergency saving, your house deposit, your pension, your offering, your gifts. Any saving that you do comes from that 20%. And then you have wants of 30%. However, if the 50% can't cover your needs, you don't have any wants. Because you cannot be out there, can't pay your rent, but you're gone at movies. You can't pay the light bill, but you're at the hotel. You want, no, it don't work like that. You have to prioritize. So your needs must be covered first from the budget. Your savings, your needs. If there's anything left, then you can go out and have like a KFC. Or go out and have like a date night. Or you go on a little vacation. But you can't the hotel relax for three days and come back the light cut off. Not no, so. <laughs> it doesn't work at that state of God. We have to prioritize what we are doing. Amen? So I want us to be better with our finances. So you must do your budget. It's important that you do your budget. I have a planner for persons who can't budget. You don't know what Brother Carlson is talking about. I have a planner that breaks it down for you. It's a financial planner to give you a little idea as to what, what do you do when you're doing your budget. And is that a leaf from the planner to show you how persons are using it to help them to budget. How much them budget, how much them actually spend to help you start making steps in the right direction. It does a page also to track how much money you are spending. Because sometimes if you just really stop, I mean, and check Marcia or check Daniel, or you spend the money or you waste the money sometimes, you say to yourself, boy, I must be better. So you must be tracking that as well. Um, in your budget, there are some fixed things I went through already that you must pay. So these are your fixed expenses, your mortgage, insurance, your car payment, taxes, loans that you must pay. Some of the expenses are variable, and the, I use the term variable because it changes every month. Your bills are not the same every month. You don't know what GP is coming with, especially this Christmas when the purple light on. January morning, a different story. Your food bill, because food prices have been going up. So your food bill changes every month. Sometimes up or down, you have control by gas. You know sometimes, some months gas is 200, gas there 150. So these are variable. So you have to control as best as you possibly can. And then you have non-essential expenses, like excessive clothes. You don't need clothes every month. You don't need um, you to use a credit card every month or eating out every month or Netflix or whatever you do. Those things are essential. So you have a basic idea. 
You may ask, but you know, when I do the budget, you know, when I write down all the things I must do, and I look much money I have, it not balance out, it not match out any at all. Because when I add up all the light, the what, the kids' lunch money, um, tags, offering, gifts, whatever the case, it comes to 120, for example, but my income is only 100. Those, what do I do? You have two options. Either you're going to cut your expenses or you're going to increase the income. It's as simple as that. Yeah? But you may say, well, I eat the bare minimum. I just buy mackerel and, and some tin food and whatever. I really can't cut any lower in brother Trina. What, what do I then do? Because I'm on the bare minimum. Then your next option is how can I increase so much money I am getting? Increase my income. Just as we pray as the Lord give me increase, enlarge my territory. We need that. But practically enough, if you pray as the Lord enlarge the territory, then what next? The work must go in. You have to know the work. Barrett, the work must be done by you, Althea. You must do the work now in Maryland, Florence, and Shelly and the work must be done by you now. The Lord will open the door. Step through the door right now. It is now your responsibility. So a lot of us on the call, we're very good at what we do. So you can look at a second job if you want. Start a new business if you want. A side hustle if you want. But you must be able to look alternative income. It is so important that you look, how it is that I can increase my income. Some of you on the call, you're very good at what you do. Some of you have so many talents that you can do, right? Some of you do hear very well or you bake very well or, you know, you do so many things well. And the reason why it is so important to have more than one, when the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 11 and verse 2, invest in seven ventures. Yes, in eight, you do not know what disaster may come upon the land. That is Ecclesiastes 11 and verse 2. So the Bible is clearly telling you you have to plan multiple ways. Yeah, when yeah. COVID-19 came, several persons I know lost their jobs, didn't have an income. Guess why? You were depending on just one stream of income. This is now teaching us, telling you and I, we can't still depend on the one income from the boss. What if the boss decides tomorrow to send me home? Send home Damien, send home you, Marcy, or somebody. We must be able to survive. Question. What can you do very well? What skills that do you have that you can monetize? You can turn it into a business. Some of you can bake very well. Some of you can't, so don't think so you can do it. <laughs> bake it and ask a friend to taste and tell you it tastes good. But you can do so many things, beloved. Um, you can do natural hair very well. Stop coming to hear them free. Start charging now. Start telling a thousand dollars to cane roll. It's $2,000 to braid. It, I don't know. But you can do so many things. The men, you can tile. You can do barbering. You can do gardening. Do not think that anything is below you in doing. And sometimes we think that we are here. You know, we're so high. We can't do No, no, no. That's not for me. But you have so many gifts and talents that you can now utilize to guess what? Start earning an income. And it's so important. When you get, and, and I'll bring that down a little bit more if you have any questions. But when it is that you start looking at your different streams of income and the money is coming in now, how are you then going to allow that money to work for you? How are you going to save? Number one, if you know you're not disciplined, do a salary deduction. Do an automatic transfer. As you get the pay, make it transfer into your savings account. Okay, you know you're not disciplined enough. Start your time and plan. Call your advisors. Call me. <laughs> Let me sort you out. Please and thanks. For many persons, you, I, I won't get too detailed in investing in stocks and bonds and, and those things. But you have several options for persons who are very low risk, meaning you don't want to lose any of your money. If you put down $100, you want to come back and see it. You have low risk investments like your fixed deposits. And those pay much higher interest rate than regular savings, 5 and 6 and 7% on fixed deposits. Yeah, you have things like your mutual funds that you can invest in. Pretty safe as well but it's an introduction for you in the stock market. For those of you who are more risky, you can go on the stock market and trade for yourself, buy stocks in, in, in different companies and trade for yourself. What that really is, you know, is you own a part of these companies. And I don't want to get too in-depth because sometimes persons get lost and say, boy, 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 there's too much information. But if you have any interest in the stock market or in bonds or stuff like that, I am open to help 
anybody at a cost. <laughs> I'm kidding, but I'm open to help anybody who wants the information because as, as people of God, it is you, Laverne, and you, Owen, and Marie, who should have the wealth to help the advance the, the kingdom. But too often we sit back so relaxed and say, oh, the Lord will make a way somehow. We sing that song. Of course he will. With the knowledge that he has imparted, that you should know you was to go out and be great. So on the stock market, you can trade for yourself. For example, you buy a share in Fontana Pharmacy, for example, at $2. And I'll break it down if you want any further help. Over time, that $2 that you bought it for at $100. So for example, you put in $100,000 in this company, if you have that, at $2, and it's now worth $4. Your $100,000 now become $200,000. You are investing the smart way. But for many persons don't, who don't go investment route like on the stock market, you have bonds, which are things like a big company is borrowing money from you and say, hear what, Marcia, if you lend me your money, I will pay you 6% on your money. Lend me your money, Marcia. So they are coming to you to borrow your money. And, you, and, and they must pay it back. So it is much safer than the stock market, for example. But these are things that you need to do or need to educate yourself on in order for you to ensure that you are making the best financial decision. I said a while ago, I want to come back to Winters and the talent because it's so important that we start thinking about what am I good at? We start thinking about how can I use my skill set? I, I use an example this week. I did a presentation and I still love her and I am sure she was on, on that other one as well. That I do these things quite often. Come out and I speak to the brethren. I speak to different schools. I speak to groups. I speak to companies, whatever. But before now, maybe before two years ago, I usually do it free of cost. Just go out and speak to them financially because I've been in the industry for a very, very long time. I said to myself, you know, the Lord cannot bless you with this information Owen, and I go out and I just talk free. Sometimes I remember the water, the throat kill you dry. <laughs> I don't talk sometimes like, hold on. And I said to myself, no, if the Lord has blessed you with this knowledge and the know how to connect, start using it very well. So I said to myself, if companies reach out to me, Tia, love, is it true, Tia? <laughs> I go to that talk, I'm thirsty, like not thirsty. And that means I've seen my bottle of water virtually. But I start going to these companies now. And if a company calls to, to give this information to their staff, it comes at a cost. If I go to a school and speak to the teachers, a group of them, it comes at, at a cost. Minimum $80,000. So to come here tonight, and that means get me on the call for 45 minutes, free of cost. Trust me, this is the tides. <laughs> because generally when I go out, and, and as a summary, they'll be laughing I can. Generally when you go, it comes at a cost, Brother Owen. And you go and speak as a policy, you go and speak free. But when I go and speak, it comes at a cost because that is my gift and talent the Lord has blessed me with. That's right. I have to know to monetize that, to use it because when you get the money, you can bless the kingdom to move forward. Love what can you do very well? You have been in HR for quite some time. You can now train persons, do onboarding, um, help other persons to know how to do the different things. Malian, what do you do very well? What, oh, how can you turn this into a business? Owen, what, what do you know very well? You can start the consultation. You know, Marie, I don't know what do you do well, and Sharon and Sandra, but all of you on this call have so many gifts and talents that you can now use to say, hey, what? Let me start doing like a business over here, sir. Let me start doing, you know, start thinking about it. And that is how financial prudence starts. That is how it starts. Change yeah. the mindset. Get a money yeah. mindset, a financially well mindset. I know we're going to heaven. I know we're working towards going to heaven. I know we're going to walk on streets of gold someday. But while we're traversing through, while pilgrim passing through, we want to pass through properly. I know we have the notion that if I suffer with him, I will reign with him, of course. But we're not supposed to be in poverty, down here, broken, and hungry. We're not supposed to. We're supposed to out here a, 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 a walk and beg. We're not supposed to. David said, you, you never see the righteous forsaken or seed begin for bread. So we should be out here. And the Lord has blessed us with knowledge and the income. We have a responsibility to be good stewards of the money, good stewards of the income, the knowledge that the Lord has blessed us with to turn it around to ensure that your family and that you are very much doing well. Right. I always close by saying the book of St. Matthew, 
chapter 25 gives an account where the Lord gave everybody talent. Some get five and some get three and some get one. The one who get five went and they work on the talent and they monetize it and they, they multiply it and do what they need to do. The one that's still the same thing. The one that got the one talent, that means they went and hid the talent. Lazy, bad mind. Just over there, so just lay down like one, just lay down and do nothing. The Lord said, you're wicked and slothful. You're lazy. And God not like lazy people. Yeah? We need to get up. Faith not works. There are no one to believe God for this and believe that we're going to. Of course, and we need to. But the work must be done. Financially, it must be done. So who are you tonight, beloved? Are you the person with the five talent? You're working, you're doing your thing? And the three? Or are you the person with the one talent? Don't you know? Hiding the talent here. You can't bother. You know, you know, you can't bother with this. Can you say, are you the person with the one talent and the five talent? Tonight, I want to encourage us. When we get our income, stop giving the income away like that. Meaning, it was frivolous. It was a spin, a spin, a spin. Start looking on how I can invest, how I can start saving. If you can't save 20% of your salary, save 10, save 5, save 2. But don't go there and spend all of your income every single week, every single month. Don't there and borrow a loan every single fortnight to get paid. You're going to the first year, then going to take a loan. I'm going to know. As you get the pay, you pay off the loan, you take an expedia the loan. That should not be how we're operating. We're representing Christ, and in everything, we must do it properly and do it well. So I encourage you tonight, if you have any questions or queries, you can reach out to me. Um, on YouTube, it's Let's Talk Money with Carlton. On Instagram and on Twitter, it's Carlton G. Stewart. And on LinkedIn, it's Carlton G. Stewart. And on Facebook, it's Carlton Stewart. So if you have any questions, anything at all, um, please feel free to reach out to me. And we can talk. If you need financial coaching as well, I offer financial coaching to help you hold your hands until you're able to, you know, do your thing on the financial side. I have one planner to give away tonight. That mean? So if anybody on the call, the first person to unmute their mics and tell me the most potent thing that stood out to them tonight will walk away with one of our financial planners tonight. Anybody? I said, Tia and go with Tia and that. Yes, yes. Go ahead, Tia. Hi, good night, Tia. Um, good night. This was really a very interactive session. As a young person, um, learning about um, saving is very crucial. And over the past few months, I've been learning about saving. So what you're saying to me is a bit refreshing. And one thing that I learned more about this evening is about investments, fixed deposits. Would you say that it's more higher than regular interest? Because you know you have a lot of money saving up into the bank. They're taking that money, making more interest in that while just sitting there. So what's the for me is also having an emergency income as well, investments, and also to make sure that you have different types of terms planning, short term, medium term, and long term. So learn that more and also to make a financial plan. I think that would guide me more as a young person. That's a Tia, Tia learning of Tia, OTR right now, you know. Yes, Tia, OTR yes. tech knows Tia, because I don't know you right now, but do our, our exam tonight, tonight. <laughs> I, I, I love that. But Tia, I want to just what are the main to ensure that you get your financial planner um, so you can walk away with that um, tonight. Any questions from anybody at all um, that you want to carry on or anything that's to the or anything that you need me to just go over quickly? I'm seeing the chat. Very interesting. Thank you, Josalie and, and Myrna. Wonderful. I'm seeing, oh, I'm just checking the chat. Um, no, I'm seeing the responses coming in. Lord, make a way somehow. Amen. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm seeing that. God bless us. Trust me, insurance. Yes, so I see somebody said that we have persons in the church that does insurance. Yes, definitely. We talk to persons, but get some insurance, beloved. All right, God bless you all. I'm seeing the comments. God bless you. God bless you. God bless everybody. Have a wonderful night, brother that mean. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Carlton. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much, sir, for making the time. Praise the Lord. Without a doubt, it was a very interactive and interesting session. And we, we thank him once more. Praise the Lord. Can we just put a thank you in the chat for the presenter tonight? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
and we thank him for going through and breaking it down, bringing it to our level. Praise the Lord, so we can have an understanding of the simplest thing, which is budgeting. Praise the Lord. And as we as we go through these sessions, we'll get some more into investments and talk about the bonds, the stocks. Praise the Lord, and how we can build wealth. And we think now about building generational wealth. Praise the Lord. The retirement we don't want when we get old. Praise the Lord. We don't know what to do. We don't have any money coming in. So we just thank you once more, Minister Carlton, for taking the time out and going through and going through with us. Praise the Lord. Any questions tonight? I know he I know he has to run because he has another presentation tonight. So let's see how best we can answer any questions. Praise the Lord for tonight. Yes, Sister Shirley, I'm seeing you're, un you're unmuted. Yes, Mother Damien. I just have one quick question, Mother Carlton. How can one, uh, how, what should I put it now? How can one build on the talent? If, for example, um, one has a talent, but they are not um, extremely confident um, to you know to to be able to go there and do the things that they 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 have, right? So, so for example, you are you, you are very good at communication, um, and you want to give talks like what you did, right? How can we? How can how can one become confident in that? All right, all right. I want to narrow it down. Narrow it down. So okay. you, you you communicate very well, but in what area? What what are you going to do? You want to write it down, narrow it down, because we, we, you're, you're going up there as an SME, a subject matter expert, really. So you do very well in what area? So you, you find that out first, yeah? So for example, if it's education, you talk very well on or it's money, for example, like me, or you speak very well on insurance, I don't know. So you narrow it down, first and foremost, what it is that you are good at doing, yeah? Yes. You ensure that you okay. get the material properly prepared, because if you're going out to charge people or to monetize the talent, that yes. what they're getting is good content. So you have, once you have all of those put down, you narrow it down, you get your content together, you do all the research, because when you're going to do your camera, you talk push no, no, uh, Marina. You have got to go talk yes. to your things then. So you get the things then right. prepared. Once you do that, you start yeah, okay. with your home church. You start with people who you know. You know, do some free sessions first to build your confidence. Because over time, you will build your confidence. Because when I just started, I was nervous. Every, I'm still nervous at every session but as you start speaking <laughs> for me it will go but the first oh. two or the first one wasn't so good but you start by practicing on you know people who you you can take the harsh criticisms from because it will get better over time but there's no magic formula to say wake up tomorrow morning and you're, you're ready for the road it takes practice but i want to narrow down what area you want to so to monetize first what is the area that you think you have the expertise in do your research, get the material together, you know, and then take it from yes. there. Yeah. Okay. All right. Question answered, sir. Thank you so much. Bless you, Marina. No problem. Good, good. Lord. Thank you, Minister Carlton. So we're going to let Minister Carlton go. As I know he has to run. So praise the Lord. Um, as you would have mentioned, you know, build on, build on that talent that you have. You know, for example, you have Sister Abigail who's online. She's very excellent at maths. Max, praise the Lord. So, you know, you have that, that time where you can do some tutoring, praise the Lord. So anything that you're good at, you know, make way for it, praise the Lord. Um, Minister Carlton would have also mentioned um, that we must be smart about our goals, right? So I see we, a hand up from Brother Owen, Brother Damien. Brother Owen. All right, Brother Owen, go ahead, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. Greetings, greetings all. Bless you, Brother Chino. Great presentation. Uh, thanks, President Damien, for this evening. Uh, Sir Chino, at what point does one say, I am comfortable? Um, I, I don't know if you can give it in terms of figure or in terms of what one possesses. At what point does that person I am comfortable? I can relax. I am all right. All right. Um, there's no set figure. Um, if you are debt free, number one. So if you are debt free, 
Um, and if it is that you have more than one stream of income that can comfortably take care of you, all your expenses and your family, um, it's something that you can start easing into, yeah? Uh, but there's no set figure because Brother Owen, maybe $10 million will make you fine. Maybe I need $200 million, you know, it's, <laughs> I don't know, maybe it is a, a, a billion. Um, but once it is that you are debt free, because if you are still in debt, Brother Owen, no matter where you are, you're getting enough money, you're still in debt, it is never a case where you're 100% comfortable. Because if you lose your income, there's still you know, something owing there. So one, you try to aim to be debt free. You try to ensure that you have more than one streams of income just in case anything happens. And you try to ensure that there's passive income in that mix of all the incomes. So you, you could have several streams of income, meaning you have passive income, you have active income, for example. So your job that you do is active income. So if you have five different jobs that re relies on you, Brother Owen, those are five active income. So if you become ill tomorrow, you may, chances are you may not be able to earn properly because you are very much active in earning all of this money. But you want to also have passive income. So for example, if you are out for a year, you're not able to work for a year, there's income still coming in. So that is where you want to, to aim to be at as well, where your income coming in doesn't depend on you actively waking up every morning at five o'clock, six o'clock, going to work, coming back home in the night, little bit that, no. So those um, four things are things that I generally um, say to my clients and say to myself, if I'm debt free, if I have multiple streams of income, the income that I have is passive and, and active. There's investments. I'm out there and the income that I'm getting is now able to cover everything comfortably with savings. Then, you know, you, you can start easing on a little bit. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, man. Daniel? Daniel? Hi, yes, bless the Lord, everyone. Bless the Lord. So um, just a quick question before you have to go. So what advice would you give to someone who is fresh out of university, probably just landed a regular entry-level job, but is interested in wealth building? Um, you shared a lot of tips and so on, and they're very beneficial and good. But what would be the first advice you'd give to someone who's finally finished with school and is looking towards, you know, building something for themselves. Number one is to make a plan. What do you want to achieve? Um, and, it's, and I say it all the time, because we, we, we sometimes just browse over it. We are finished with school, now we're getting our job. Great, we don't have any debt. Hopefully we don't have student loan to contend with. But if we do, it is fine, because many of us have done it and we have gotten over it. But Daniel, what do you want to achieve? As a young person, you're 24, you're 23, what do you want to achieve financially? For many persons, it would be something like, I want to start investing. I want um, to own a home in by the time I'm 30. I want to have a second business. So these are all things that you need to write down and say, what do I want to achieve? Some critical things that a young person need to do is still have debt if you possibly can. So don't try to run on every loan that comes up. A loan to buy a, uh, a loan to 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 go our event alone to keep a party for you. No, stay away from these lifestyle loans. Yeah, and focus on what do I want to achieve. So I tell people all the time: your first job, start saving towards mortgage from your first job, your first income. Daniel, that must be on your agenda, on your plan. Yeah, so you start saving towards um that, and then after you have written down all the things that you want to achieve or the thing that you want to achieve, then we can take it from there with your budgeting. So for example, you, know, you want to save a million dollars by the time you are 30, for example, how are you going to achieve this? You want to start a business, you want to open an investment account, you you know, you, you, you list the things that you think you want to, to achieve and they'll take it um, from there. Okay, thank you. Marketing 25 years for me, how am I going to to be debt free before it is paid off, Myrna. So the, the reality that many bankers ourselves don't tell persons, if your mortgage is, for example, Myrna, $50,000 a month over 25 years, if you pay even 10% more, it's $5,000 more on your mortgage, it cuts the term by about seven years or six years. If you pay and it's not 25% more, which in this case, if you're paying $100,000 a month on mortgage, you pay $20,000 more every month, 
on the principal. It cuts the mortgage by about 10 years. Mortgage is the most expensive debt that you'll ever have. The banks make the most money. So if you take a loan for $5 million, for example, from NHD, better than if you finish pay, you pay like $15 million because of what is calculated. So if it is that you put monies on your principal more every month, Myrna, um, that helps. Also, over time, mortgage becomes cheaper. So if you were paying $40,000, 50 years ago, for well, I know people with mortgage now paying $2,000 a month. And when they started out 15 years ago, it was expensive because over time, the, the dollar value, the, the money value drops. Um, so over time, it will become a little bit cheaper and it's much more affordable. But the trick behind the mortgage is more now. If you can, if you can afford to pay anything extra on your mortgage, it also helps. Number two, if you have an income that can cover your mortgage for you, that also helps. Or to subsidize the, in, the mortgage for you. That also helps. It is cheaper now for real. Yeah, man, it is it, it, definitely. Don't aim for lifestyle loans and credit cards. You can also use credit cards to help. So I don't want to say steer away from credit card. If you are disciplined enough to use a credit card wisely, it also helps as well. Yeah. Any other question before I jump off? Yeah, so, you know. Yeah, man. Um, the idea of self-actualizing, is it is it real or just an imagination? Mm -mm, not real. <laughs> you can never self-actualize. Well, let me not say that. Once you reach a level, there's something else that you're all obtaining <laughs> before. Yeah. Seems like oh, you can't be holy that tribal deer, you know, you're, you're, you're making it with your time. You reach a level now, you raise the one, go higher in a God. Which I love you on is higher. And this is the human nature. Um, but which is why when you set goals and you achieve those goals, you say, all right, on to the next. For many persons, when you buy a home, or when you say, all right, I just want to buy a home, and that is it for me. You get the home, you say, all right, what next? I want to expand the home. You realize you start the tile one new time. So it's always more for you to go after and that you want to achieve. So I don't think the term self-actualization is something that is, is really real. That's my personal opinion. Yeah, thank you. you can be content. You can be content. Yeah, good answer. You, you, you can do. If there's nothing else, I won't allow you to detain me. Um, time is money. <laughs> I got to go. Have a good night, beloved. Tia, that's the last question I'm taking. Sister Tia, go ahead. Sure. Um, one question. Uh, having a issue to understand um, life insurance, you know, like, um, some agents will say that it's beneficial in certain way, like for collaterals, et cetera. Yeah. I'm not really understanding it that much because you know, to put away some of their life insurance is a lot, is a, is a high monthly payment. And I really want to understand the benefit side of it. So you don't just look at it as, oh, when I did someone going to get it, even though we know we're going to leave for others to mm -hmm. get it. But how can we use it meanwhile we are still living? And I, I get, so it does not have to be insurance to you. I, I don't know how, how, how old you are, but the younger you take out life insurance, the cheaper it is for you. So you can take life insurance. Anything you can afford, you can get a coverage for that. So if you can afford 2000 a month to you, you can get covered for 2000 You can afford 1000 you can get covered for $1,000. So it doesn't have to be expensive, especially if you take it out when, when you're very young. Life insurance covers your life just in case you die. But it also can benefit you because when you pay life insurance, the first thing, a part goes towards the insurance and sometimes a part goes towards investment. So ensure you ask your advisor as well. The investment portion is a saving. You have access to it. You, you, you can draw it out if there is an emergency or you can use the po that portion of it as security for a loan just in case you have to. But one of the biggest benefits, if you plan to ever own a home, you need life insurance. Um, because every mortgagee, every mortgage that you take out, you must take out a life insurance as well. So just in case you die, the mortgage loan is paid off. Um, so if you don't take out the, the, the insurance, no. You plan to buy the house when you're 40 or 35. Imagine you could get a coverage of 35 million, for example, at 825 for 4,000 a month. Then you want to buy a house at Brother Owen's age. Um, that same $25 million may no cost you 60000 you find that if you took it out when you were younger, um, it would be much cheaper because it's the most that you have this when you're going to take out a mortgage. So it has the benefit of the mortgage component. It has the benefit 
of the cover of your life. If you die, your beneficiaries can benefit. If you have a component, if it's an investment portion of it, you can benefit as well. And that can also use to secure a loan. That has about four benefits, um, Theo. Okay, thank you. Yeah, man, no problem. If you need anything else, you can call me, send me on social media. Oh, book a session. It's just eight thousand dollars for forty-five minutes for an individual. I mean, it's so cheap. Like I'll just give you a discount. God bless you all in Jesus' name. <laughs> amen. 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 Um, thanks once more, Mr. Carlton, for for your time, sir. And really do appreciate it. Praise God. Praise God. Just want to share also, you know, just a. Uh, as a quick testimony, persons might hear him speaking. Persons might wonder if, if it actually works. Um, in in twenty nineteen, if you begin now twenty nineteen, I had no idea what investment was about. I had no idea what emergency fund was about. I had no idea about savings, the background of it, all of that. You know, we'll have a little. Piggy pan and we save a little fifty dollars as going to school when going to school and that's one that's one thing also you can be going to school and even for our young people the the money that your parents is giving you or that you're getting and even as young persons you can even have a um, passive income you know if you're good at doing this you're good at helping people at projects um you're good at maths you're good at a certain subject even as a young person in school you can have that as a side job. You know, going to, going to school, they don't have any idea about investing, et cetera, but the Lord would have opened the way in such that um, I started working at an investment company. Praise the Lord. And uh, my eyes have been open. When you talk about a blind man that can now see, the Lord has opened my eyes. There is now an emergency phone. And an emergency, emergency fund, just in case, praise the Lord, my mom had surgery last year. And even though most of her insurance covered it, there was still an emergency fund there to, to assist her with, with, um, with covering the rest of the surgery, though all the hospital had dime. So things like these, as a young person, you can start. Uh, when I started on the stock market, I hated it. I didn't have any idea how this was going to work. But it, it does work, um, saints of God, it does work, young people. Um, it's never too young to start. Praise the Lord. Parents, it's never too young to start. You can open an account and let me just advertise <laughs> um, from a company. You can open an account. Um, it's very easy at JMMB. Um, you can come in, you can set up your emergency fund, you can set up your insurance, you can set up your investments. Um, it's easy as one, two, three parents. The child doesn't have to be an adult of 18 years old for you to open an account for them, add the child to the account, start saving towards their college education. Praise the Lord. So you don't need to wait until their college. Um, they're almost close to college for you to start saving and wondering where you're going to get the money from. You can start from now, whatever you have. If it's $500 you have every month, if it's a thousand dollars you have any more every month, I think we have the idea as saints of God are. Um, I don't know if it's Jamaica or it's just something about finish digital um, financial education, thinking that investment you have to have a five hundred thousand or a million dollars to get started. You can start with whatever as little as five thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars, and from there you can build your portfolio. You will be surprised see what can be done when you put aside certain amount if you don't have to eat out this month you can cook your food stay home enjoy watch a movie with the family continue to pray over your finances and the lord will work it out so young persons you don't have to wait until you're 18 open a regular bank account get started from there and continue to build the wealth uh, we have church needs and we hear it announced every every Sunday, and we just we don't want to take it lightly. That can also help. If something should happen, there's an insurance coverage that can assist you. You don't have to be dipping in your emergency fund. You don't have to be touching your investment. Things like those that can assist 
to make it easier on yourself, trust me, it will make a world of difference. We're talking about building generational wealth, right? Um, for kids, for newborns, you can open your account for your newborn baby, praise the Lord, and you can start from there. It is awesome investing. It is awesome saving. It's good when you can go online and you can view your bank account, knowing that you start from $1,000 and there is now a couple more zeros on your account. And you know that you did it little by little over a period of time. So young persons online, encourage your parents, parents who are online, whether you want to do it for your grandchildren, it's about building generational wealth. And as Minister Carlton would have started out, it's a thing to... So to, for the apostolic or the Pentecostal church, it seems like a poor thing and uh, we, know we don't have it. Praise the Lord, not comparing us to another church, but if you look on church such as the SDA, they have businesses. Praise the Lord, they have buildings, they have apartments, they have commercial buildings, and they're building your wealth. Um, church members helping each other. Praise the Lord. And I do believe that's why we would have started such a session and started as simple as possible, just starting it out with budgeting, right? Um, that we can do it. Praise Lord, we, the youth department will be looking on a lot more sessions coming up, right? As Mr. Carlton would have also mentioned, we need to be smart about our goal. Be specific, let the goal be measurable, let the goal be attainable, realistic, and timely. You don't need to look to the left hand side and look to the right hand side and say oh my neighbor is having a car so i need a car my neighbor bought this new phone so i need this new phone right we don't need to do all of that we are children of the most high god or say but the lord has for us is ours but we need to put our talent at work whatsoever you can do do not discount it thinking that it is not enough start where you're at if you can sew, if you can be a K, if you can speak properly, um, if you can help someone in a, with, with, a, with a homework, with you know, whatever it is. Um, if you like to plant flowers, you know, you can start to help people with landscaping. Once upon a time, people normally look down on landscaping, you're out in the sun, but landscaping nowadays is millions of dollars to do your landscaping, right? So whatsoever you can do, do it. Um, he also pointed out to make your goals. So what do you want to achieve in the next year, right? Write down those goals. That when we come to the next session, I want you to write it down. Um, if you can write it down in your phone where it is always safe, because probably if you put it on a piece of paper, it will be lost. But write down that short-term goal. What do you want to achieve from now to next year, God's willing, and if the Lord tarries, next year, December 2023, December the 16th, what do you want to achieve? And once again, make it very specific, make it measurable, make it attainable, make it realistic, and make it timely. So you can go ahead and do that even as I speak. What do you want to achieve? And if you want to think about it after we have closed off tonight, please go right ahead. What do you want to achieve financially from now until next year? And then what you're going to also do, what do you want to achieve medium term? So we're looking at two to five years. What do you want to achieve in that timeline? Right. And thereafter, what do you want to achieve on a long term basis? Right. Do you want a house? You want another house? You want to add to your business? You want a, a couple of motor vehicles to put on the road? What do you want to achieve? And saints of God, as children of the most high God, I'm telling you, it can happen and it is real. This is not a blessing ceremony or, you know, the Lord is going to bless you and he's going to give you a house or cars and land. But the Lord has given us talents. He has given us speakers. He has given us persons in the church, praise the Lord, to assist with building generational wealth. It was when Malachi grew up and Courtney and, and Amaris grew up right? It is a bit better off for them than it is now, right? So make that plan, praise the Lord, and, uh, and put it in action, and let's see how the Lord is going to work out. If you want any investment accounts, if you want any emergency fund accounts, please, you can reach out to me. Most persons will have my number. 
um, simple KYC documents are needed, ID, and we can have these things started for you. It's never too early or too late to start savings and investing. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, everyone drop a sleep. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Brother Damien. Bless you, sir. Bless you. Um, I, I just, the fact that you mentioned JMMB, um, I think that it's worth that we mention that the, the um, Bank of Jamaica had actually um, advertised the interest rates that the banks are giving. And so it's smart for us to know that JMMB is one of the banks that is giving the best interest rates on our returns. Um, more than twice what some other banks are given. Um, it's a good bank to think about. They are, they are for the people. That the start that plug that in. And, and that's public news. So we're not necessarily advertising for them. It's public. Yes, sir. Understood. Thank you very much for pointing out that, sir. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Any questions, any comments before we, we wrap up? Any questions? No? All right, all right. The Lord bless you. One and all, the Lord bless you. So we're going to, we're going to go ahead and close off in prayer. Praise the Lord. And for tonight, um, I see one prayer request coming in the chat. And it is for Nidia Ellis, praise the Lord. And I want to say over oh Nidia Ellis, praise the Lord, because once there is life, there is hope. So we are praying for our sister Nidia Ellis, um, who needs deliverance, praise the Lord. And I'm not seeing any other prayer requests coming in for tonight, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And for Sister Kay, who has exam tomorrow, we want to pray for success in the examination tomorrow. The Lord bless you. Um, uh, Elder, Elder Brown, just want to ask if it's possible to um, read a word of prayer for us and close off tonight. I will go into the announcements thereafter. Sure. It was a very beautiful session for the main commendation to the youth department, um, to yourself and your team. Um, Thanks to Brother Carlton, excellent presentation. I'm sure um, that I have personally benefited. I'm sure there are others on tonight who have also benefited. Um, we, we can't afford for it to be said that the children of the world are smarter than the kingdom. Um, we must occupy, we must be smart in our financial dealings. So, um, We'll have to give, not to borrow. Um, we'll set good examples. Um, as, I, as I pray, I just want to plug this quick brother that I mean, one of the reasons some persons, and especially men, like um, Farrakhan, uh, some of these guys who have the ability to pull men to them, it is the power that they wield. One of the powerful things that they have is um, wealth. They have strong financial uh, support. And so men are attractive to that versus a churchman who can barely drive a car. Um, your car is at the tire shop every day. Your tires are the smoothest on the road. Your engine sounds worse than anybody else. In other words, they'll practically laugh at you because you're talking about big God and um, you're not really demonstrating. Not saying that we demonstrate God by what we possess materially. A part of our ability to attract, especially men, is by virtue of uh, uh, our, our stance, our position here on earth. So it's it's smart of us to be to be very um financial financially savvy, and um it's a learning for every one of us, young, old, and some very practical points. 
that you raised earlier can really help, especially our youngsters, to develop that kind of financial. Right, so I just thought I'd plug that as we uh, close out in prayer. So Lord, we want to thank you for tonight. We want to thank you for uh, this session. Thank you for the youth department. Thank you for the spirit of wisdom, oh God, as we seek, Lord God, to be more prudent in our finances. We seek, Lord Jesus Christ, to be smart in what we do. Be very careful, Lord, how we is that which you have blessed us with. We acknowledge, Lord, that we have not always been that smart. We have not always been that content. At times, Lord God, when we've wasted your time, Lord God, when we, we have not necessarily uh, uh, used the proper tools dealing with our, our finance. So tonight, Lord, we seek you as our Father. As we seek to be uh, educated, as we seek, Lord God, to get wisdom, help us, Lord, uh, as you grant us, Lord God, the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding, as we deal here on earth, that, oh God Almighty, our ways will be pleasing before you, our ways will be pleasing before men, oh God, and your, your favor will rest upon us in everything that we do. We thank you for this beautiful session. Thank you for the wisdom that has been imparted. I pray, Lord God, you would help us, Lord, not just to hear them, but them in practice as we seek to grow in grace and the knowledge of your truth. As we seek to occupy here on earth, oh God, as you have lent us time. We thank you as we seek, Lord God, to leave, oh God, an inheritance for children, for children, children. Oh God, we thank you. Your words have Back us up tonight, Lord, and we seek the of your words. We seek, Lord God, to learn more about you. We seek wisdom in the name of Jesus Christ. We want to thank you for this session. We want to thank you for the youth department. We want to thank you for all the planners. We want to thank you for the presenter tonight. We pray you continue to bless him, bless his family, bless him in his going out and his coming in. in. Oh God, as he be that example, Lord God, for others. We bless the Bethel family. We bless our leaders, our, our bishop, our presiding bishop, God, our overseers, our, our pastors. We bless them tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. We seek, oh God, to build your children, Lord God, that will grow in grace and in the knowledge of God's truth. We thank you for hearing us even now. We thank you for the names that have been submitted tonight. We thank you for Lydia, oh God, LSB. Place her into your hand. Oh, God, you're still our deliverer. Oh, God Almighty, there's nothing on earth that is too difficult for you. And so we bring her before you, Lord, and pray, Lord, that you'll break every chain, every addiction. Oh, God Almighty, everything that runs contrary to your righteousness. Oh, God, we bind it and we cast it out in the name of Jesus Christ. And that, Lord God, your righteousness will be established her spirit. Oh, God Almighty, that you will renew her thought. Oh, God, that which is out of order will be brought, oh, God, in line, will be brought back into order. Oh, God, and that you will be done in her life. Hey, oh, God, who has exams tomorrow, that which she has studied, oh, God, will come back to her. Oh, God, and evil, Lord, that which she may not have known, Lord, that her wisdom will be so opened up, Lord. That you will be to write, you'll be able, oh God Almighty, to practice, put in practice, oh God Almighty, and to put the right things on the paper, oh God Almighty, that you will get those desired. I bless her even now in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the youth department, continue to bless and strengthen. Thank you for the Portmore family, continue to bind us together, Lord, to increase us in strength, grace, and in the knowledge of your truth. Believe all in. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Oliver. I just want to thank everyone once more for coming out tonight. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, and indeed, once again, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I just want to want, add one additional thing. We're nowhere in the month of December, and it is a Jamaican says, feel for something nice kind of month. 
praise the Lord. But remember that we have next year coming up. So please budget wisely and spend up wisely. Praise the Lord. So we have tomorrow um, our practice once more for our Christmas production that is coming up. Very excited on uh, Sunday, December the 18th. Praise the Lord. We start at 6 p.m. The practice tomorrow starts at 4 p.m. sharp. So please be on time. 4 p.m. sharp, about 4 to 8, as best as possible. We have the final practice for Sunday night. Praise the Lord. And bearing in mind that it's an opportunity to win souls for the kingdom of God. So let us be as excellent as possible in what we do. We continue Sunday morning um, with the Sunday school classes, praise the Lord. And also we continue with uh, morning worship at 10 p.m. Those who can make it in the sanctuary, 10 a.m. Those who can make it in the sanctuary, please go ahead and do so. If you cannot, we'll be on YouTube live. Praise the Lord. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. Praise the Lord. Ella Brown. So I have to close up, brother Damien. You said something? Yes, benediction. Okay, okay, all right. Bless you again all. Thanks for joining. We say no one to him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his throne with exceeding great joy. For Lord, see where we ascribe all glory, honor, dominion, majesty, and power, both now and evermore. Say amen. And God bless you, brethren. God bless you. Amen, amen.